I look like a rock star now. <laughs> These habits of mine, you know, I've been wired over time. <laughs> Utterly charming, unquestionably sexy, and skilled in five languages. 28-year-old Dutch supermodel Mark Vanderloo is every woman's perfect man and every designer's perfect model. With movie star charisma, classic features, and sumptuous sex appeal, Mark has the face and the smile to launch a thousand campaigns. I look at you and I see my world. All I know is that five years ago I was working in a bar, you know, serving beer, so I made 200 bucks a night, and I'm doing a hell of a lot better now, so <laughs> I can't really complain. Nor should he. From campaigns for Calvin Klein and Versace to Donna Karen and Hugo Boss, Mark has become the male model of success, and according to VH1, the male model of 1996. I don't know, I'm just me. <clears throat> It's like I'm not, uh, I'm not anything, I don't try to be anything. I think throughout the years I have a whole range of feelings um, tugged away in all the pictures because I know pretty much for every time I felt how I felt, if I, if I was in love, if I was very sad, if I was, you know, uh, happy, not happy, very worried or whatever. Mark's fun-loving allure comes from growing up in a small village outside of The Hague, Holland. While he's at the top of his career now, becoming a model happened by accident. Something about milk? Yeah, National Milk Campaign. I did one with my girlfriend. I was dropping her off at a shoot. And um, they needed somebody for the next week, a couple of preferably, to uh, shoot a National Milk ad. And I was 18 years old. And whenever the pictures came out, I thought it was horrible. Which is why he put off pursuing a career in modeling until he was 23. At that point, I was with an agency in Amsterdam, and there was a lot of guys going to Italy and to France and to New York, and I was like, hey, that's kind of cool, you know, that's nice, you can go anywhere. From Paris to Milan to Manhattan, Mark travels the globe, an opportunity which has enabled him to meet a multitude of personalities, such as his equally famous supermodel pals, Jason Lewis, Alex Lundquist, and Keith Mallows. It makes it nice because, like that, you hang out with your friends, and... I don't know what we talk about. We always have something to talk about. Oh, you caught the biggest fish? I did. I did. The first caught, fish. Who caught the most fish? I, I caught the first fish. I caught the first fish. I caught the biggest fish. I ate the most fish, no, 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 no. and I was I sick. <laughs> They're just the best guys. The best guys. So, you know, you've met them all. Sean Patterson, the boy's Wilhelmina agent and close friend, continues to be amazed by their tight-knit relationship. I've never seen this level of friendship between anyone who are competing in the same business. I mean, these guys are supposed to be competing with each other, but instead they're putting each other up for jobs. I mean, they're, 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 they're forever saying great things about each other to clients and photographers and agents and whomever. And um, I'd have to say that that's probably why they're all where they are, you know? Call them fashion's fab four, if you will. Each has his own unique personality, but Mark seems to possess the wild streak, particularly involving his somewhat maniacal driving. No, no, listen, it's not true. This is, I'm serious, this is, this is a little bit exaggerated by everybody. It's just because if you look in Paris and you look how the people drive here in the French, and then you compare it with L.A., you know. In L.A., everybody drives really decent. And in France here, you get a fight for your spot, for your spot, right? In the next half hour, road rules are put to the test as Mark and Alex take a spin through the city of lights during Men's Fashion Week. You would get one hell of a shot with a camera going through the windshield <laughs> in the next car. Also, along the way, Mark reveals there's more to him than just flash and dash. I've always been running too hard and too fast and always forget about myself and I try to take care of myself more. From a romantic look at picturesque Paris, you see, that's what I like about Paris, because everywhere you go, there's a courtyard and there's a back, back place and there's some beauty going on. To some beauty going on backstage and on the runway. From tragedy en route to a Paris fashion show. I'm not going to be late for the show. To finally winding down when work is done with friends and agent, doing a leisurely look at the left bank. It's an affair to remember with Mark Vanderloo, the Cary Grant of the modeling world.
Welcome to Paris Fashion, Men's Fashion. Men's Fashion Week in Paris is a time when journalists and buyers, models and designers get together for one of the most glamorous events of the season. As usual, Mark Vanderloo is one of the season's stars. He'll do at least 50 shows and make more than $100,000. This is kind of typical for the Parisian shows. They use old buildings. Um, it's always kind of like figuring out where you're going. Today, Mark is on his way backstage, where he'll work the runway at the Sonia Raquel Men's Show. The location? Les Ecoles des Beaux-Arts, an art school situated in the heart of the left bank. This is beautiful. See, that's what I like about Paris, because everywhere you go, there's a courtyard and there's a back, back place, and there's some beauty going on. And it's kind of hidden from the streets. You don't really know this is all going on from the street. And not many people know that this is going on from the street. This is how it looks now. It's totally empty. It's very quiet. It's silent. This is the runway. And uh, this is where later it's going to be happening. And if you look around, if you look around. <laughs> Mark not only models Ms. Raquel's clothes on the runway, he represents the company in their print campaign. And they told me I was on the invitation, so... Oh, you got one. That's all right, right? A very modest Mark heads backstage once again to find his friend and fellow supermodel, Alex Lundquist. It's like hanging out with your buddies and for, at the same time you're working. And that's, you know, what better job can you have? Alex is otherwise occupied, so Mark gives us a sneak peek at what he'll be wearing in the show. That's the great thing, what I like about this show for me, is because I'm, I'm wearing, like, sports jackets. Just like that. He's very, he's very intelligent, like a man. And very skilled with a high 8 camera. Hello, Alex. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, Mark. Welcome yeah. to the Paris and the men's show, my collection of 90s. You like what you're wearing, Alex? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, nice and relaxed. It's, uh, I would say, it's something I totally could wear. You know there's no sound, right? <laughs> Fun aside, it's time for Mark and Alex to go to work. Coming up on Model, our sexy supermodel guys get stranded on the street. Stop filming. There's nothing to see. But first, it's off to a fitting for Mark and Alec, if they can find a place to park. We're not taking all this fun. <laughs> After playing producer backstage during the Paris collections. You know there's no sound, right? <laughs> and working the runway at the Sonia Raquel show. Oh, I just... Take a deep breath, and that's it, you know. Supermodel Mark Vanderloo is ready for his next adventure. But first, he must appease the swarm of fans awaiting his arrival onto the Parisian streets. Sometimes that's nice because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's charming, and sometimes it's, uh, you feel like you're watched all the time. But there's one place Mark can go where he's sure to dodge a watchful eye, behind the wheel of his souped-up BMW. He loves driving, but speed is like, it is a bit of a rush, don't you agree? What was that about, champagne after the show? <laughs> it's good because it kind of chills you down. Mark, along with his supermodel pal, Alex Lundquist, manages to squeeze in yet another fitting, this time for British designer, Nigel Curtis. How difficult it is to run, run between shows? It's not really difficult, you know, you just got to be able to, to move quickly, you know. Mark doesn't have a problem with speed, as evidenced by his attachment to his BMW. Alex, on the other hand, prefers the freedom of a motorbike. If something happens on a motorcycle, you, your body is taking the dangers. I let him try mine, the Ducati, and the thing with Mark, yeah, the way he drives cars, he should stick with, with something that has safety belts and, you know, a a metal shell around him, airbags, and that whole spiel. 
these, these seems fine. to be working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they work, right? Yeah, no, not bad. They said to me, don't break too fast because you're going to be in trouble. Conveniently, most of Fashion Week's festivities take place in one area of town. But finding the Nigel Curtis fitting is tougher than it looks. I can take you for a drive for like half an hour and pretend that I'm, I'm you know, going to go right direction all the time. <laughs> So who do mail New York? Is which is the street going to Pacific Park from here? Wait, wait, wait. I think it's even one more further. Then you're gonna yeah. get on it. Not this one? With the lever. It's right in here, yeah. right? You can. It's gonna be easier if you pull forward a little bit for us to get out from the side. <laughs> this makes sense, right? Yeah, it's fine. If you just pull forward. Oh, he's gonna go away. Can I push it? No. I can push the truck back maybe a little. Okay, I'm just gonna put it here. We're not gonna be long. So you guys want to get out? It's open fine. Oh, I thought it was a door, you know. Yeah, that fits. Oh, that's better, that's better. Yeah, that's yeah. better. I thought it was an entrance of the store. You know? uh, it's been very true, I don't think the store is going to be too happy with this, you know what I mean? So I'm going to put it there. We're not taking all this, come on. <laughs> I can tell you, every time I get my car towed, at least once or twice, and this is one narrow escape. Now that the parking ordeal is over, Mark and Alex face yet another challenge. It's like the same, same as last time, so... Just keep on going until we find The two are in search of their elusive fitting. No? Makes my day. Hi, how are you doing? We have been following this. A fitting for a male model is a much easier and quicker process than that of a female model. Usually it's, it's uh, you have to put on your pair of shoes or you have to maybe that alter the pants. For Mark, the fitting is over, but there is time for one more stop before heading to the next job. He's been invited to view the Hugo Show, Hugo Boss's funkier line of clothing. Volker, who designs for Hugo, is a good friend of mine, and uh, I was like, what he does, and he invited me to the show. And uh, obviously, I know all the people there. That's because Mark is one of the main faces under contract to represent the Boss line in the print campaigns and on the runway. The Hugo show this season is at the Moulin Rouge. And despite the crowds, Mark slips right in. But this time, to watch the show. Coming up on Model. When work is done, it's time to play. So Mark, along with supermodels Alex Lundquist and Keith Mallows, hit the streets for a very candid look at the left bank. So you guys here on holiday? Yeah. This is our yeah, memoirs for our parents. This is a little holiday. I'm telling you. But first, the boys come across near disaster on the road. Let go with the car. <laughs> After taking center stage during Men's Fashion Week in Paris, appeasing his fans with an autograph, and carousing the Parisian streets in his BMW, Mark and his model friends are ready for yet another march down the catwalk. But this time, they run into some complications. Please, please stop filming. There's nothing to see. While the backstage of a fashion show is typically just steps away from the catwalk, Japanese designer Kenzo opted to do something different. The venue where we're doing the show, there's no backstage, there's no way of getting backstage at all. So what they're doing is we're getting ready here, getting dressed here. Everyone has one outfit. We just go on the bus and then we just come out one by one and go around the, uh, around the Buddha Bar, the club. For Mark and his friends, it won't be necessary to pack onto the bus with the rest of the models. I usually have my car and it's like, well, should I take my car? No, it's going to be a problem, you know, because otherwise you're going to be there and we're going to be there and we like to keep everybody together and, you know. Without knowing the disaster that looms ahead, Mark and his friends agree to board the bus. We're on our way to the Bar. We can't show. Thank you. On this very cold night, 
the 70 models file on board, dressed in Kenzo's Fall 98 creations. Minutes pass, and there's still no movement. The engine won't start. So uh, everybody's sitting in the bus, and I could see the driver, she had a uh, net empties on. And I think she got, I think she got kind of cold because it was kind of cold yesterday, so she probably had the heating on. And we were like an hour later, so she's probably sitting in the bus with the heating on. So the bus ran out of battery. But the show must go on. There's only one thing to do. The Kenzo crew attempts to tow the bus. They try to tow the bus with the truck, right? Instead of getting a cable out, I don't know what it was, but it looked like a piece of cloth. Mark and his friends don't waste any time. They head straight to the Buddha bar. But to, to use a cloth to tow a truck, I don't think it's going to work out, so I'm just going to go back. <laughs> I'm not going to be late for the show. Meanwhile, the rest of the models are forced to take cabs, while unsuccessful efforts are made to tow the bus. If you have to move 70 people from one place to the other, the bus breaks down, it gets kind of messy, you know. So the show is kind of delayed, and um, it was actually kind of funny, you know. In the end, it works all out. Despite the delay, Kenzo's Fall 98 show is a success, and Keith, Alex, and Mark are ready for their next adventure. Coming up on Model, when the drama of Paris Fashion Week is done, it's time to live it up on the left bank. Don't double dip, you know, you shouldn't double dip. <laughs> Don't tell Sean I did that, he'll freak out on it. As one of the most famous faces in the male modeling world, supermodel Mark Vanderloo's career takes him across the globe. Fortunately, he doesn't do it alone. His friends are at his side. Well, type, type 24. Yeah, that's the cool thing about it because we joke around and we hang out and, you know, you see each other everywhere in the world and you're never stuck to uh, or obligated, okay, when I'm there, I really need to see this person because uh, we have a very freely relaxed friendship relationship with each other and that's very, it's very cool. After experiencing a full week of fashion, a near catwalk calamity and a wild ride through the streets of Paris, the guys are ready to relax. But this time, it's on foot. In Paris, there's nothing more charming than the left bank. Mark, along with supermodels Alex Lundquist and Keith Mallow, spend the day with their agent wandering the streets, navigating stores. While the boys prefer to examine antiques, their agent Sean heads down the street in search of the perfect pillowcase. Okay, to meet you. Probably be shopping for the next half hour. I like to buy things where they come from. You know, I mean, it's look, it's nice to look around here and to find to find things. But I prefer if you're at a certain place to get it from there. If you're in Turkey or Morocco or India, or wherever, it's nice to collect things from there because it has more value than just going to shop and to get it. Mark and the guys decide to check up on Sean in the pillow store. As a matter of fact, it's the Parisian Pottery Barn, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a small version. <laughs> pottery Barn Petit. Le Petit Pottery yeah, Barn. Yeah. <laughs> but I like, you know... The novelty of shopping like begins to wear off. After working all week long, the boys are fatigued and in need of some coffee. I like this place because it's not too French. Ooh, or you can get coffee, you know, like it's early in the morning, I really need a cup. So you guys here on holiday? Yeah. This is our yeah, memoirs for our parents. This is a I'm telling you. Food is also in order. The guys order soup and sandwiches and head upstairs. Don't double dip, you know, you shouldn't double dip. <laughs> Don't tell Sean I did that, he'll freak out on me. Sometimes I feel like I'm running an asylum, but it's that phrase that my parents always said, the inmates are running the asylum. Whether it be behind the wheel of his BMW, on the runway for Hugo Boss, goofing off on a shoot for guests, or toasting the town. Mark Vanderloo lives the good life with good friends, 
good times and really bad driving. No matter where his travels may take him. Where do you call home? Um, everywhere. Home is where the heart is, and I'll take it with me everywhere, so. <laughs> <laughs>